Greetings, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Capricorn New Moon webinar of the 2025 initiative. We use the cycle of new moons to bring our collective focus to the common good. We use our group meditation to focus various topics that lead to the manifestation of the new civilization. Civilization for the common good. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Alexander. So our topic today is Group Observer, Illusion, Glamour and the Search for Truth in the Age of Disinformation. And our purpose, our overarching purpose in this pro project is on the screen at the moment. So we're seeking to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet through group meditation. And in doing this, we wish to focus our group intention for the common good, bring spiritual principles and laws to life in the world, and magnetize together spirit saturated and magnetize together spirit saturated thought forms of solution for practical action in the world. And in this month of Capricorn with our topic of group observer, glamour and the search for truth, we're working on the Cardinal Cross, which we're using to explore topic areas related to new leadership and government governance, new leadership and governance. So as we seek for the perception that will enable the vision and mechanisms needed for all of us as humanity to find new harmonious and loving systems of governance. We follow the light that clears the way to the mountaintop of Capricorn this month. That from this higher vantage point, as the light begins to wax from the new moon, we may explore our theme. As we draw together around this intention, I'm handing over to Tracy now who will lead us in the naming circle. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Rebecca. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance. As we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work, by uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers and Action Area group members. As your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name, and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. Hello, this is Alexander, United States. Welcome. Rebecca. Hello, everyone. This is Rebecca in the Sunshine Coast on the East Coast of Australia. Welcome. Jennifer. Hi, this is Jennifer from Northern New Mexico. 
Good to be on with you all. Welcome. Lynn. Hi, greetings everyone. Lynn Gitter and I live in New Mexico, very near Jen and Maria in the United States. Welcome. Maria. Greetings. It's Maria Michaelis in Taos County, New Mexico, a neighbor of Jen and Lynn. Welcome. Daniela. Greetings, everyone. Daniela, I'm calling in from Brussels, Belgium, Europe. Welcome. Andrea. Andrea, please unmute yourself. Hello, I am Andrea Russ, and I am calling from Manchester, Vermont, in the United States of America. Welcome, Barbara. Barbara, please unmute. Welcome, Barbara. Brad. Hi, it's Brad in upstate New York. Welcome, Brad. Catherine. Hello, this is Catherine from Sydney, Australia. Welcome. Cheryl. Cheryl calling in from Ames, Iowa, USA. Welcome. Chris. Um, this is Chris Chaplin calling from Hastings, New Zealand. Welcome. Danielle. Daniel, please unmute. Welcome, Danielle. Darcy. I see Darcy's audio is not active. Darcy is calling from Washington, D.C., United States. Thank you, Alexander. Welcome, Darcy. Diane. Diane, please unmute. Welcome, Diane. Francis. Good morning. This is Francis from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Welcome. Fred. Fred in South Florida, USA. Hello, everybody. Blessings to everyone. Thank you. Welcome. Helen. Helen, please unmute. It didn't go. Was that Helen? Or um, if if not, um, anyway. Yes, you um, are. Helen. It, it, it is me, right? Welcome. Helen Franklin. I'm uh, from England, quite quite near to uh, London, but a bit out in the countryside. Lovely to to be with you all. Thank you. Welcome. Jim. Hello, everyone. Jim Clark, Merida, Yucatan, Mexico. Welcome. John. 
Greetings, it's John Horan in Washington, D.C. Welcome. Yoka. Hello, this is Yoka from Belgium. Welcome. Josette. Hello, I am Josette from uh, Vosges Mountain in French. Welcome. Judy. Uh, hello, this is Judy Harrison from Brewster, Massachusetts, USA. Hello. Welcome. Karen. Hello, everyone. It's Karen Gritska from Portland, Oregon. Welcome. Catherine. Hello, it's Catherine Powers, Northfield, Minnesota, USA. Welcome. Kiki. Kiki, please unmute. Welcome, Kiki. Leslie. Leslie, please unmute. Hello, everyone. Calling from Phoenix, Arizona, USA. Welcome. Martha. Greetings, everyone. Martha Gallahue from Weehawken, New Jersey, USA. Glad to be here. Welcome. Martine. Hello, this is Martine from Belgium. Welcome. Maureen. Welcome, Maureen. Maya. Hello, everyone. This is Maya Costley from Grass Valley, California, USA. Welcome. Richard. Richard Saxton from Golden Valley, Minnesota. Welcome. Robin. <laughs> Welcome, Rosie. Greetings, everyone. I am Rosie Romero from Tijuana, Mexico. Welcome, Sarah Ann. Hello, welcome. Welcome, Tamara. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose.
And from this place of alignment now, let us joyfully welcome again Jennifer, Lynn and Maria from Northern New Mexico who have stepped into the flow of the Common Good Project to be our action area group this month. They are established co-workers who regularly meet together for study and meditation under leadership of Francis Donald and Lynn and Maria are also intensely involved with the work of the Moya Federation. At the time of the Capricorn full moon, Jennifer, Lynn and Maria came together with the coordinating and subjective groups who support this project to receive together the impulse and impressions which have been held across the fortnight from the full moon to the new moon, keeping our topic in focus in preparation for the webinar today. So with much gratitude, we now hand over to Jennifer. Over to you, Jennifer. Jennifer, please unmute yourself. It's great to be with everybody. And we've certainly spent a couple of weeks here focusing on the group observer and our relationship to truth through our various glamours. But Lynn's going to talk first about how the astrology is affecting uh, affecting us in, in our topic. So Lynn, go ahead. So as we see in this slide, we have group observer, illusion, glamour, and the search for truth in the age of disinformation. Okay, my screen is frozen. Alexander, do you want to show your screen? I've just managed to move the slide. Oh. Can you see it? Oh. Yes. Great. Okay. Astrological factors of Capricorn New Moon. January 13th through 15th, New Moon at 23 degrees Capricorn, conjunct Pluto at 24 degrees. The Moon now in Aquarius. Sun Pluto conjunction continues through the 15th at 24 to 25 degrees Capricorn. Mars square Saturn at 3 and 6 degrees Taurus in Aquarius. The meanings of this new moon will come as no surprise. This is from Alan Oaken. The inauguration of new power structures. There may be some difficulty in this inauguration because Mars square Saturn is not a particularly friendly combination that tends to bring about a certain tension between the urge to move forward, Mars, and existing structures that confront such movement, square to Saturn. The events of January 6 demonstrate this energy. Astrology that demands truth in 2021. Jupiter, Saturn, Mercury and Aquarius, square, Mars, Uranus, Black Moon Lilith in Taurus, square in fixed signs. The status quo of Jupiter, Saturn, Mercury versus the unruly trio of Mars, Uranus, Black Moon Lilith, which are angry, impulsive, non-conforming -conform energies, demanding freedom and truth. Square between Neptune and the nodal axis will be exact at several times in the year, demanding truth. What's true? What can I trust? And a few more words to add to this. It's a, been a very complex month and will continue through February. A, month, a key month of awakening, 
chaotic and volatile, a rebellious year, a revolutionary year, a breakdown to break through, to get us to a much more loving world, working towards a new earth grid. Triangles, I ask? Freedom, independence, autonomy of the individual, a reality check. How well have we mastered our emotions and yet survived? This is all from Pam Gregory. Many other aspects are simultaneously occurring that will prove challenging to all of us. And the best we can do at this point is to shift to a high level of being and anchor in the heart as a lot will come to light this year and shatter our illusion. Thank you. Over to you, Tracy. So over to Jennifer now, and I um, have the slide of the sun here now. Great, thank you. So this is a sun pillar, which is actually ice crystals in the air that form this. <clears throat> this was on New Year's Day in the afternoon as Lynn and I were standing outside uh, looking at it, just going, oh my goodness, this is amazing. And then our, our friend Cynthia took the picture. So uh, let's let this light be a beacon, a uh, beacon that can hold us to the position of truth. Because that is just going to be so called for this year. And how that's understood, we're going to discuss, but I think a good gauge of truth is that it's life affirming and we can depend on that no matter what level of truth we're talking about. So next slide, Tracy. I mean, sorry, Rebecca. Truth on so the truth spiritual on, path. Oh yeah, truth on the spiritual path is actually the expressed energy of the one in whom we live and move and have our being. That's a pretty high energy, of course, and most of us are not relating at that level, especially, you know, the whole of humanity. Uh, largely, we've got the personal truth, um, which can be so limiting, and that's where we find our, our maya, glamour, and illusion. And the group, the truth expands as we go along the spiritual path. We can understand truth to be this, this huge energy, but our, as our perceptions become more refined and our consciousness grows, we're able to contact more and more of that energy and bring it to our work and service. Uh, so we see this progression from personal truth to group truth and eventually the truth of divine purpose. And we see the principle of goodwill on all three of these levels. And the law of right human relationship is its, its expression. So the self-will of the personal truth is all dominating at first on the spiritual path. But as our hearts open and our chakras open and we progress, we get to the goodwill that includes the group, you know, which is kind of our focus today. And we can see that this goodwill of, of, of the, um, the law of, I'm sorry, <clears throat> the law of group endeavor and the principle of unanimity expressing in this principle of goodwill. It's the energy of love, wisdom, and the energy of soul. The law of spiritual approach and the principle of essential divinity expresses in this truth of divine purpose. Here we have the real will to good, the higher principles, and the consciousness as touching triad or monad. Next slide, please. This, I believe, is Thomas Merton's touching the truth of divine purpose. He says, at the center of our being is a point of nothingness, which is untouched by illusion, a point of pure truth, a point or spark, which belongs entirely to God, which is never at our disposal. 
which from God disposes of our life, which is inaccessible to the fantasies of our own mind or the brutalities of our own will. This little point of nothingness and of absolute poverty is the pure glory of God in us. Next slide. So let's explore for a moment, and this is purposeful to have some ideas in our mind to explore this, this concept of truth. But let's explore for a moment that area that obstructs the, our perception of the real, the larger truths, which is the focus on personal truth. First, illusion, which is there are entrenched beliefs in the not self. It's our concept, our beliefs, our basic sense of self. These are things that must be examined and loosened until we recognize clearly the dweller on the threshold, our self that must expand and vibrate to the angel of the presence. This illusion is reinforced by glamour, which is the way we feed the false self and how we interact with our self-made reality. It's our attachments, the things we hold dear, the dramas, the reactions that keep us in our sense of self. Glamour is further limited by Maya, which is belief in the physical senses without acknowledging that there's more. Glam, sorry, it's also the just believing in phenomenal reality, that that's the only thing there is. Next slide, please. This is a beautiful painting that Maria did that I thought would illustrate the aspirant's task. Next slide, please. So DK tells us that there is a sure way to address these glamours, and he gives us the methods for resolution. Maya is resolved by inspiration, our development of our astral capability. Glamour is resolved by discrimination, a refinement of our mental capability. And illusion is, is resolved by using intuition by aligning with intuition and broadening our spiritual perception. So we're, as we're all becoming more conscious of being part of the kingdom of souls, we can look outward and start to participate with the groups with which we are a part. So that soul infusion, that at one moment, we become aware of the group of which we're a part, the group, and we become able to function as the group observer. Next slide. Now, dissipating our own glamours and dispelling our own illusions in our own lives serves all because of our interconnectedness, our interdependence. At the point of the group observer, we know the interconnectedness and interdependence to be true. It is our joy to serve in that way. DK, of course, gives us a powerful tool for groups to use in the dissipation of world glamour, which is the formula for the dissipation of world glamour found in Glamour, a world problem. I know there's groups around the, the planet that are doing this in earnest to dispel particular glamours, and this is a huge service. We basically taking the soul light of the group and focusing it into the astral plane and to disseminate, disperse, dissolve those glamours. So if you participate in that, I thank you very much. Next slide, please. The observer, the first words of our contemplation today, group observer, offer a way groups can address the dilemma of misinformation. From Treatise on White Magic, the student of the occult must assume consist and consistently hold the position of the observer, 
detached from the mechanism of observation and contact. He must recognize himself as essentially a spiritual entity, different in nature, objectives, and methods of working from the bodies which he considers it wise to occupy temporarily and to employ. Next slide, please. And a beautiful painting of Maria's. Next slide. So it's our aspiration today to work as soul from the group, to contemplate and magnetize insights from the intuitional realm into mental matter, soul's wisdom flowing to the mind held steady, and to better equip each of us to utilize the gained insights in service for human betterment. DK was quite direct in wanting disciples to apply the techniques and learning to practical application in the life. Next slide, please. Again, Maria's work, beautiful. Today's meditation is a method of contempl contemplative meditation. William Meter tells us that at its foundation, the soul seeks to convey its wisdom, guidance, and understanding into the mind of the personality. And a seed thought is used to facilitate this. So as a group, we'll take a seed thought and do just this. Next slide, please. So it's so it's it's coincidental and of course no coincidence that this is the topic for this month's concentration and without even knowing all of this was going to happen and that how much truth is going to come to the fore it's encouraging to see some of the legislative efforts and social efforts at formalizing some some structure around truth so that's that's wonderful. But we want to do this with do this meditation with a seed thought with con contemplation to take this word and we'll settle first and calm our quiet our bodies. Then we'll start from a place of loving inner stillness. Then we'll put truth in the mind which can be seen in the form of a word as we see on the screen an image or a thought of a geometrical form, whatever represents truth best to you. Next slide. Then we'll contemplate this seed thought, letting ourselves ponder in order to have product particles of mental substance activate and charge around the theme. Then I'll ask you to breathe it up or breathe it out into soul space. Personally, I like to imagine it going along the thinnest transparent gossamer thread, although that isn't necessary. You can just expand it and let it go. Next slide, please. Next, we'll quiet the mind and place ourselves in a condition of poised receptivity. We will have set the stage for illumination by such enlivening of the mind, and then we will relax the mind and wait. We hold the mind steady, trusting that the pondering activity has created an anchor point for the downflow of soul's light and understanding. Then we will invite the mind to use and formulate into ideas and impressions that we can share with each other. I'll provide some gentle guidance for the timing and, and process, so don't worry about remembering the steps. Your eyes can be opened or closed per personal preference. All right, so then let's all get comfortable. 
and sit well in alignment. Wiggle your butt a little bit from the presentation. And then we're going to start with three long, slow, deep breaths. So let's advance the slide one more. Now we begin with those three long, slow, deep breaths. We add a little extra focus to the breath. Become aware of our body and relax. Consciously let our shoulders down. We began with a smile. Good. This brings a chalice to the body. We let that go now and just relax. With the breath, we re relax the emotional body, let go of any feelings generated by these thoughts. We can picture our emotional body as a calm pond. relaxed and calm. We relax the mind, let any thoughts go. We notice that the pace of thoughts diminishes. From a place of inner loving stillness, we say the affirmation, I am soul, source of clear light, giver of dynamic life, director of all my intentions. I am soul breathing.
Now we will introduce the word truth or the symbol or whatever you have chosen into the group chalice for consideration, pondering, and contemplation for approximately five minutes. So we take, we think about truth, we take a, just breathe with the concept and we can, it's good to ponder it, contemplate it.
We trust that we have magnetized mental matter and we now with a breath outflow, let it trust soul's illumination will convey soul's wisdom and understanding. So we're gonna take nice long slow deep breath and as we do, we're just gonna let it go. Let truth go up, 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 out, 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 whatever you see as the method. And then we're going to rest the mind. So we take a nice, slow, deep breath. We hold the mind steady in the light.
We trust that the anchor of our mental matter and the thoughts which we had earlier will draw back this contemplation of truth from soul to mind, brain. So we gently invite that light to create impressions in the group chalice and our individual minds. So we take three breaths. Long and slow and deep. And we draw the meditation to a close with a single om. So Rebecca, you can put on the last slide and over to you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. And I invite us to take a couple more minutes of silence and write down impressions. And also, we encourage you to use the link in the chat window for the collaborative page where we could bring together our impressions. Having it as a summary of our group meditation.
I invite us now to share our impressions in a group circle. So if you would like to share anything, please ra raise your hand. It's a button on the control panel and um, we will uh, invite you to the circle. Maria, do you want to share anything? Was somebody speaking right then or wanting to share? I think that was Rebecca. Rebecca, <laughs> did you want to share anything? No, I just wanted to open the space for Maria to share some of the things she might have. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the. Um, what I wanted to bring to all of our awarenesses is that we, uh, from our meditation and study practice, DK definitely uh, admonished us to be of service and the practical application of truth uh, came up for me when I was uh, working with uh, Jan and Lynn on this, uh, that the practical application, how can each of us go out into the world uh, or uh, in our own little world, um, how can we do this? For me, it's it's painting. And uh, uh, there's a wonderful uh, Picasso quote I wanted to share with you. It goes, the meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. So that implies that we, we find through our meditation and study our own service. And of course, number one, uh, our service is truth. Truth with ourselves first, to be honest with what we have to work with and what our challenges are personally, and using our meditation and our study to help move us into the truth of our own gift. Dancing, any of the arts, writing, all that is an avenue for the truth of our being as disciples. Um, our relationships, of course, truth, so important. Our expression in the world is the next, um, the next outlet for us from ourselves and relationship. And at our disposal these days are, are many ways to do that. Um, social media, for one, is a practical uh, and very available way for us to express our truth. There's so much disinformation that pours through those avenues of social media that we have an opportunity to share um, mantras, to share inspirational quotes. Um, and uh, I aspire to do that, not to, not to regurgitate anything that I'm not very sure of uh, is truth. Uh, and of course, any of the new group of world servers uh, are great avenues to express truth and to work with dispelling disinformation. And I'm, I'm sure others have many uh, ideas also, but those are mine. And uh, I encourage everyone to find your gift and give it away freely. Thank you, Alex.
Thank you, Maria. Uh, Andrea, your hand is raised. You're unmuted. Please unmute. Um, that was a wonderfully powerful exercise. And I am so grateful to be a part of this group because I think that we bring so much to all of humanity. Um, I, I repeat in many ways what was just said by it was either Maria or Alice. I'm sorry, I didn't know which one you were. But Maria. I, I thank you, Maria. I um I I found that in the, the practice which I've sort of taken on more recently of just focusing on occult speech and silence, that there is that opportunity to to, to really consciously pause before one uh, sort of interacts in conversation and in relationship um, in a way that that lets one sort of take that position of observer before making the speech come forward in a very powerful way, I think. And so I think that, like Maria, it's about spending thoughtful time as we spend our lives and interacting within our lives to, to, to pause in, in silence and contemplation before we are impulsive in, in our response or our reaction or our, as, we, as we pause to sort of grapple with, with the truth and come to some realization of a truth and then expressing it from that place that's a little bit more contemplative instead of reactionary. So I just like that. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. I invite Maya. Um, yes, um, very similar to Andrea's impression. Um, I felt very strongly guided to really stay focused in the truth, which is the opposite of a lie. And the lie is the lie of separation. So there was a very strong impression to really focus in that sense of unity through body, speech, and mind, and really hold that tension as much as possible in meditation, in speech, and in actions. I could go into detail of how that might look, but that's obvious it's different for everybody, but uh, it was just a reinforcement of that need right now. And thank you for the meditation. It was very profound. Thank you, Maya. I agree. It was very, Jennifer, thank you for taking us that high and impressions still coming. Thank you, you're welcome. Thanks for the feedback, people appreciate it. My friends. I invite Sarah now. Please unmute yourself, Sarah. Oh, hello, is that better? Yes, can we can you? hear you now. Good. Well, I was taken to the cup of understanding. Um, I, I thought that was a beautiful analogy of the smile and how important it is just to be. Truth um, comes to a number six um, numerologically, which is very much for me about Gaia, 
home understanding and being true to ourselves. So I felt felt the great warmth of that, but in essence, it is just to be and to observe. And thank you for a beautiful meditation. Thank you, Sarah. There was another raised hand by Nina, but not anymore. Nina, if you would like to speak, please raise your hand again. Uh, please unmute yourself, Nina. I'm muted. Do you hear me now? Yeah? Yes, we can hear you okay. now. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to share a little different perspective, which is that the meaning of life is for us or for myself, uh, always increasing my conscious awareness and evolving. And the purpose of life is to leave the planet a little better than when you arrived. And when I think of truth and when I saw truth, it looked like a puzzle of many, many pieces. And that if we looked from above, we would see that all the pieces are relevant and somehow how they come together is what's important. And that to remember it is all purposeful and has an identity and yeah, and a future. And that the, the most important piece is not to identify too much with one perspective and that maybe all information is disinformation because it is comes from a projection of the of the mind and the personality and that really to hold the whole is the most important thing we can do and so then we can traverse this path in a different way being open to radiating and magnetizing all. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. I had very similar impressions to what you shared. And I think just by the nature of our human experience, we, until we reach high initiations and uh, we are all prone to illusion and glamour and maya and so the truth here on the physical plane it's a very relative concept considering that truth of the reality the higher reality and so each of us has own perspective kind of like own piece of a puzzle but when we start synchronize our minds and hearts and learn to work as a group by bringing each of us own piece of a puzzle together we can and combine them we can see a, a little bit bigger truth and still it will be segment and i i, I think that's by like in, esoteric groups holding that focus on the high reality we as a group as a uh, trained group of uh, observers we can 
reach together as a group consciousness we can reach the consciousness level of similar close let's say not similar but close to that uh, of initiate and as a group we can start sensing that higher truth and I agree that it's it's important to hold that vision magnetic and then by in our individual life we each of us would get that reflection of that bigger truth that's whole that held by a group in consciousness it's somewhere the key talks about that uh i think it's in the same uh pages where he talks about the unanimous simultaneous meditation uh, and unanimous meditation is based on the recognition of the truth the inner res resonant recognition of the truth in the same pages he says that uh yet every country every nation might have their own version of truth and none of them should be uh put in the same system and expected to express the truth the same way there should be respect to different ways of expression that's uh, higher truth thank you Just to follow up with what you said, Alex, um, he says in Dinah too that true unanimity is a free decision in response to presentation of truth, which is as near the achieved reality as possible. Therefore, it is in the enunciation of truth that security for all men lies. It's a good goal for us. Rebecca, yourself. Oh, sorry, Rebecca, go ahead. Maybe it's better if Rosie speaks. Okay, yes, uh, I saw Rosie uh, uh, put her hand up. Yes, you're unmuted now, Rosie. Yes, I am in mute now. Um, for me, the meditation, the group alignment was very, very powerful. That really allowed us to get into the level of the high reality of truth. And um, uh, meditating in the silence on truth, I just it became light for me. So the light is the the thing that we can bring down. To and embody it and you know express the in a way in our daily activities and uh, i think the true is so powerful and um, one is free of glamours and illusions is a very very powerful tool for servers world servers to do the work I really thank you for this meditation and all the insights from others and just greetings and a lot of love to everyone. Thank you. Uh, Rebecca, we sure. Thank you. Such beautiful sharing and um, um, echoing what everyone said. That it was just a wonderful meditation space that was created. So thank you. Um, I had some um, concrete images that 
<laughs> seemed to say things that came for me. And um, the first one was the elephant of truth, which is um, the story and it just kind of dropped in and just stayed there for quite a long time. The story of um, many men in a dark room with an elephant and one is holding the tail and one is holding the trunk and one is holding the leg and one is underneath the belly pushing down on his head and all of them have these different perceptions of um, what an elephant is. <laughs> um, but um, the the actual, it's echoing what others have said, that being able to perceive the whole elephant um, validates every perspective and um, brings it into a greater whole. So um, it was just a different way of experiencing that, I guess. Um, and then um, the other, another image that came was of a doormat um, and that we, how that, was interpreted by my mind was that it's the doormat before before the threshold when we enter into that higher more unitive consciousness and we have to um, clean off the the mud of the glamours that um, cloud our perception um, and the other one was of children running um, and that was a more um, numinous image of children running and the sense of a, um, a supervisor or a parent or um, a supervising being, which I interpreted as being the soul and the children running being perhaps our aspects of our personality that need to be integrated and overseen by from a higher level so I guess they were just all pictorial depictions of um, the other impressions that people have been experiencing thank you and thank you for the share again it's really rich Thank you, Rebecca. There are a number of impressions that's uh, been shared on the um, uh, control panel here as a uh, chat, or and I uh, moved them to the collaboration page. And there are several people who contributed their impressions into the collaborative page directly. So I will read few of them. Uh, John wrote, to begin to know truth, we must learn to live above the world of duality, above the third dimension, into the world of possibilities. Um, I think I didn't quote the entire phrase completely. Uh, I see John is finishing. Oh, that was from Tracy. Um, Another impression, uh, it's from, uh, uh, you've got to help the voice of youth and what is truth. Jim wrote, the great way has no impediments. It does not pick and choose. When you abandon attachment and aversion, you see it plainly. Make thousands of an inch distinction, heaven and earth swing apart. If you want it to appear before your eyes, cherish neither for no against. I think I can show my screen because I'm reading it from the screen. Um, um, so this is our collaboration page. Uh, the link is in the chat window so you can uh, check there um, some people are still typing uh, lean wrote master decay used the word mosaic to describe our each truth also the truth are sign posts yoke wrote 
Buddhists say about sin reality. The only choice we really have is whether to try to be in relationship with the truth or to live in ignorance. It's very beautiful saying. Yeah, Rosie shared her impressions already, but I will read what she wrote in the chat. The path to truth is the heart, and once we reach it without glamorous and illusion, we see and bringing and all the planets. Have a few more minutes left of our time together, so if anyone has any final words, um, uh, please. And I want to uh, thank our uh, presenters, uh, Jennifer, Maria, Lynn, for holding the focus of, on this topic for uh, uh, since the full moon, but also together the subjective uh, uh, group of the uh, meditation for the common good. Uh, it's a group who uh, holds the meditative field behind the scenes and uh, every month uh, uh, holds the focus on the topic uh, uh, that we choose to meditate on and also the, the subjective support for the whole project. So thanks for uh, everyone who's involved in holding and creating this beautiful group meditative field. And if uh, Jennifer, Maria, uh, or Lynn, you have any final words, please share with us. I just share what I, what dropped into my mind so strongly with such joy at the end was that the biblical quote and the truth shall set you free and I just felt the liberation and the joy of that um, was palpable so thank you everybody and um, I just wanted to share too my image which came in so strongly um, like Rosie I really saw the truth as light. And uh, the image that came was the Great Pyramid and the invisible apex of the pyramid on the top, which is truth. Um, and I'm also very impressed that it's, it's a big factor in the United States, uh, that image. Um, so I aspire to um, to greater truth in our in our country that comes from that realm. And thank you all for making this possible. It's uh, really a beautiful, radiant expression uh, to put out in the world. So thank you so much, all of you. And I typed this into the uh, chat box, but I just wanted to say the image I got, speaking of triangles, was seeing truth as a triangle with a monad at the apex, soul on the right-hand base and personality on the left-hand base, monad dynamic direction, soul intu intuitional understanding, and personality grounding truth. Uh, 
invite you to join the coming new moon uh, pre pre preparation of the coming new moon by webinars as each of this webinar is a, is a product of the group effort holding the topic in meditative group field starting from the moon so the next uh, new moon it will be in, in the Aquarius new moon we will find of a We've lost your sound, Alexander. So now I'm back. I guess oh, I apologize. Good. There was a problem with the connection. Yes, so um, in the next cycle, uh, we work with the topics related to the economy of sharing and an Aquarius new moon. It will be topic of economy of abundance. So we invite you to join the group effort. And the next new moon in Pisces, as we work with the topics of mutable cross related to right relationship. So we will meditate on topic of establishing right relationship with our understanding of death and dissipating fear of death. So please contact us uh, and we will guide you how you could join our uh, group meditation for the common good. And on the screen you see the uh, our coming webinars uh, this month. Uh, daily we link for the daily vigil, which will start soon, uh, today I mean, but it happens daily. And also on the full moon uh, on the solar festival, there are two webinars. One is the creative lab uh, for the involved in the souls of the nations. And the second one on January 27th with Vladimir Vasiliev from Russia, sh sharing his experience of building and living in in the community's space of love, a great idea introduced by uh, a mystic from Russia, Anastasia. Thank you, dear friends, much love. And uh, Thank you, Alexander. I think you were just handing over to me. We lost you again. So as we close, let's just sound the Gaia tree um, as we close our topic of truth today. O oh, thou who gives sustenance to the universe, from whom all proceeds and to whom all returns. Unveil to us the face of the true spiritual sun, hidden by a disk of golden light, that we may know the truth and do our whole duty as we journey to thy sacred feet. Oh.